Oh, hello. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, boy, oh, boy. It's been a couple of months. Uh, it's so, so good to see you. Good evening, friends. My name is Nicholas Vaselli. I am the Artistic Director of Theatre Breaking Through Barriers. Uh, and yes, as always, I am coming to you live from high atop the Thunderdome here in glorious spring-like Midtown Manhattan. And I want to welcome all of you tonight to Theatre Breaking Through Barriers' fourth Virtual Playmakers Intensive, or VPI for transformations. <laughs> um, we begin our fourth VPI on the horns of a paradox, my friends, as we both remember and celebrate the passing of a milestone. One year ago on this day, March 12th, 2020, COVID-19 officially arrived here in New York City and uh, <laughs> proceeded to systematically shut us all down. Office workers were told to work from home. Restaurants either shuttered completely or became uh, delivery takeout only establishments. Travel became restricted. But most significantly, um, our ability to gather, to socialize, worship, or to simply celebrate life by attending a concert, a sporting event, or most uh, painfully for us, a live play or musical suddenly stopped. New York City, the city that never sleeps, was forced into an unwelcome hibernation. So, as of today, we have all completed another full revolution around the sun, this time with COVID-19 as our unwelcome travel companion. And returning to the spot from which we started a year ago, we found that we've sort of stumbled into a weird alternate reality. A reality of masks and food lines and vaccine lines. Perhaps your favorite coffee house has disappeared or the person who cut your hair every month for the past 30 years was forced into retirement because of a lack of business. The street that was once bustling with full restaurants, crowded bars, sidewalks packed with tourists have now, has now become an abandoned back lot with rows of for lease signs on the windows. So yes, we are um, definitely in a much different place. And yet, when we look back on the past 365 days and take stock on everything that's happened, how we were all forced to adapt to conditions which none of us had ever encountered in our lifetimes, we have to take a moment and appreciate our tenacity and our growth. We are here. We've not yet resumed public gatherings or opened our theaters, but we're here. As performing artists, we couldn't collaborate in person to create our art the way we normally would, so we came up with new ways to connect and remain productive and connected with our artists, our fellow artists, and our audiences. So in spite of everything that's been thrown at us, we could not be stopped. And that is truly worth celebrating. Uh, at the same time, we can't begin the celebration without a few moments of reflection of all we've learned of all we've lost, of who we lost. To all of the more than 531,000 souls in this country and the 2.6 million souls worldwide who are no longer with us due to this pan pandemic, we want to dedicate our work during this intensive and over these, over these next 10 days to the everlasting memory of all of those souls and um, as a remembrance of the love, the light, and the life they brought to our lives. They've all left indelible influences, and we will not forget them. And so, as we complete the circle on this past year, I officially welcome all of you to our opening night. So we begin our celebration by uh, breaking out the bubbly with a true corker of a play, written by one of our favorite playwrights of all time, the brilliant and slightly troubled Jeff Tabnick. Um, it was directed by the incomparable and equally brilliant Pamela Sabaw, and it features a stellar cast, including Melissa Jennifer Gonzalez, Carlos Guillermo, Richard Lear, Rebecca Quinn Robertson, and Dan Teachout. So one final exciting development here. As we continue to explore this new virtual medium, we're always pushing to create work that's accessible to all artists. Now, currently we feature live streaming captioning, as you can see, uh, so our deaf, hard of hearing audiences, uh, audience members can enjoy our work. But beginning with this intensive, we'll also be adding audio description 
into the mix for the benefit of um, all of our blind and low vision audience members. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce right now our resident audio describer who will kick off tonight's evening, the dazzling Anne-Marie Morelli. Hello, and again, welcome to TBTV's fourth virtual Playmakers Intensive, Transformations. Transformations? Our theater is Zoom. Currently, the stage is dark. All action will take place within Zoom boxes on screen. Tonight's audio description, however, will be provided by an off-screen narrator. Clown Fetish Party is written by Jeff Tabnick and directed by Pamela Sabal. It features Carlos Guillermo as our off-screen narrator, Dan Teachout as Murder Clown, a man about 50, Richard Lear as Sad Clown, a man also about 50, Melissa Jennifer Gonzalez as Party Clown, a woman about 30, and Rebecca Quinn Robertson as Annie McGee, a woman in her mid-twenties. Lights up! Three clowns appear, all in their own individual Zoom boxes. This is the story of young, optimistic go-getter Annie McGee, who, due to a technological glitch, found herself in a virtual clown fetish party. But we'll start our tale a few moments prior to our hero's arrival. What were these three clowns doing just before Annie McGee mistakenly stumbled into their video chat? <laughs> Why, these clowns were doing absolutely nothing. Children's party clown in a multicolored wig and ecstatically bright makeup was doing absolutely nothing. Ironically sad clown, sporting an orphan Annie wig and a big white frown, was doing absolutely nothing. And bloodthirsty murder clown, pale as a ghost with smeared red lips, was doing, you guessed it, absolutely nothing. for an uncomfortably long period of time. Finally, bloodthirsty murder clown itched his own nose. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> You lost. The witch clown can stay still the longest game. I'm so sad for you, murder clown. Oh, come. I'm so bad at games. Does it make you want to kill? A little bit, yes. <laughs> All right, sad clown. Now it's your turn to pick our next activity. <laughs> I will now recite the entire screenplay of Swingers by John Favreau, or as I like to call it, Swingers, an American tragedy. Exterior, Hollywood, night. The soundtrack opens with Frank Sinatra's Fly Me to the Moon. <laughs> A helicopter shot of the L.A. Basin. <laughs> Precisely as the clowns began to imagine Los Angeles in all of its pre-COVID glory, Annie McGee, confident and smiling in Dress for Success business attire, popped uninvited into their video conference. Excuse me. Sorry, I'm... You're not a clown. No, I'm Annie McGee. Why are you all interrupting me? I haven't even had a chance to say, you're so money. Oh, I, I was in a big video conference with the travel agency I work for. We were put into breakout rooms, you know, smaller virtual rooms. I was supposed to be in the marketing breakout room, but somehow I ended up here. <laughs> Funny, you're all clowns. Nothing gets past this one. <laughs> you must all really like clowns. No, 
Not really. Eh. Then wh why are you all dressed like clowns? We refuse to tell you. <clears throat> Continue the recitation, said clown. Interior, coffee house, night. Mike, and what if I don't want to give up on her? Rob, you don't call. Mike, but you should said you said I shouldn't call if I wanted to give up on her. Okay, uh, see you, clowns. Exciting times at the travel agency now that quarantine is coming to an end. <laughs> <laughs> that was a strangely ominous response. Anywho, I'll just hit that pesky little breakout room button. Huh, I could have sworn it was right on the bottom right hand corner. Did, did the button move? <laughs> the button didn't move. No problemo, I'll just shut down my computer and... Oh, huh. poor Annie McGee. I, I can't shut my computer down. This <laughs> might be a good time to ask. Hmm. Annie, how do you feel about clowns? <laughs> That's okay, no big deal. I have another computer in my... <laughs> but, try as she might, Annie McGee could not escape the confines of her Zoom window. Uh, how come I can't walk outside of the virtual box? Because you're inside the virtual box. Clown fetish party is no normal Zoom room. <laughs> Once you're in, you're in for life. There must be some way for me. Only I, the host, can release us all back into the real world. But I will never do it. We sit in the virtual world and play games for all eternity. <laughs> Why would you want to do that? We don't want to go back to the real world. We want to stay in quarantine. So we're hiding in here. It's such an exciting time out there. Things are just opening up. I got my first shot and my second one is scheduled and I'm planning vacations and play dates for my kids and I'm a single mom and I can't wait to get out there and date again. <laughs> I have so much to look forward to. Tell me why you won't release me. If I end this meeting for one, I end it for all. And I won't do it. I will get out of here. You will listen to Sad Clown recite a 1996 independent film. Can I pick an activity for us all to do? If you wait your turn. Rob, right. Mike, so I don't call either way. Rob, right. One hour and 36 minutes later. Rob, you said you didn't call her. Why didn't you call her? Mike, Mike. Fade to black. Thus concludeth Swingers, an American tragedy. My turn to pick a game. I think she intends to trick us into letting her go. This should be fun. No, really, I mean it. I'm actually very excited. I hope you have makeup with you. I do. Why? Only clowns can pick games. What type of clown will you be? What type do you want me to be? It's not so hard to pick a type of clown. First, I was... Partly clown. Only part of my face was painted. But when Murder Clown accidentally called me Party Clown, and I thought, oh, that's much better. You could be actual clown. What? what? You know, like she was born a clown. That idea is stupid. Sexy clown? <gasps> that idea is beneath you. 
How about hamburger clown? Ooh. What? what? You know, a clown that sells hamburgers. We <laughs> like it. We like it. Hamburger, hamburger clown. clown. Hamburger clown. clown. Hamburger clown. Hamburger clown. Hamburger clown. Hamburger clown. <laughs> and so, as Annie applied her makeup, she tried to entice these clowns to re-enter the real world with her choice of game. So, my game is, I want you to tell me what you loved most about the real world. I knew she would try to trick us. Oh, Annie, you don't know what you're up against. But I can't resist the game, so let's play! Come on, let's play! Oh, me, 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 me! Me first! Me first! Uh, my favorite part of the real world was... The quarantine! Well, no, I mean like in the real world. The quarantine yeah. was in the real world. Sure, but... I loved everything about the quarantine! One morning, a week or so into lockdown, I awoke to birds singing. Birds I never heard. They brought me to the window, which I promptly raised and inhaled the air sweeter than I'd remembered. And I realized for the first time in my life, I didn't have a knot in my stomach. My jaw didn't hurt from all night grinding. I had nowhere to be that actual day. No commute to battle, no friends to pretend to like, no co-workers jokes to fake laugh at. In this quarantine life, it was me and my jasmine tea and my computer screen with a list of tasks I could competently complete. My bowel movement that morning, solid and singular. The pre-quarantine life never offered me that level of stability. And as I went to bed that night, I didn't feel like a weirdo for having enjoyed seeing no one. No, my isolation made me responsible, even heroic. And as I slipped into a comfortable blanket of sleep, my jaw was slack and my sphincter oh, was relaxed. So why not return to that? There is no returning. Family members are getting vaccinated and insisting on visits. Work is demanding in-person days twice a week. I suddenly feel guilty and uncertain again. Who should I see? When should I see him? Is that man on the train too close to me? Was my boss joking with me or sneering at me? No, I won't. I won't go back to the before life. That's why I'm here. And now... I'm more resolved than ever to stay here. <coughs> Backfire! <coughs> I'm sorry, did someone say something? <coughs> Backfire! That's what your plan is doing! Backfiring! <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part of the real world was the quarantine! Ding, ding, ding! <laughs> There I was, one morning during the quarantine, sitting at my kitchen table, and everyone I loved was in sight and within reach. My two beautiful sons sitting on the couch watching their virtual school lesson. What a joy to eavesdrop on my children's education. What a gift to relearn the meaning of prepositional phrase. And my sensitive husband, fixing appliances when he wasn't diligently video conferencing with clients. My adorable dog snuggled up on my lap. Everyone I loved where I could touch them and hug them and feel their weight upon me. They were mine. All mine. I'm just a jealous guy. Now my husband is seeing clients in person and being cagey about where else he's been. And the kids are going back and forth to school with all those reckless drivers and child bullies 
and leering adults. Now, some days it's just me at home with the dog, but even the dog is sick of my crying. It's too painful to let my loved ones go every day. Thank you for inviting me here, Murder Clown. Thank you. Let me guess, Murder Clown. Your favorite part of real life was the quarantine. No. I hated the quarantine. <laughs> <Yes! laughs> but my favorite part of real life was before the quarantine. We, you can have that again. I can never have that again because of what happened to me during the quarantine. Locked in with my family, locked in with myself, with no distractions, sinking into the quicksand of friends lost, opportunity squandered. The days were relentless and suffocating. I yelled at my wife, I berated my kids, did my wife insist that I was too hard on myself? She did. But inside, I was roiling with depression. The darkness, like heavy eyelids behind my eyes, dimming all. Quarantine was hard on the whole family, but, but I was always the one messing up, causing the tears. I was temper. I was irritability. And the worst part was when I was clear-eyed about it, I, I could see. This was nothing new. I had always been irritable. The current situation was just the current excuse. To fully be who I'd always been. No. I'm better off in here. Everyone is better off than I am in here. If Party Clown and Sad Clown pulled on Annie's sympathies, Murder Clown's monologue felt like the closing of her coffin. Annie McGee struggled to hold on to her optimism, but all she could think to say in that moment was, Would anyone like a hamburger? <laughs> what was your favorite part of the real world, Hamburger Clown? Hope. And so, with each pointless game, Annie McGee's worst nightmare in the real world manifested in the virtual world. Freedom delayed again and again and again. But over time, as each clown's makeup faded with no way to replenish the supply, Annie started to suspect why they had become clowns in the first place. And in this suspicion, she plotted her escape. Dante. Get the fuck out of here already. Randall, I'm gone. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Randall tosses the sheet sign in to Dante and exits the convenience store. And thus concludeth Clerks, an American Tragedy by Kevin Smith. When I first arrived, you all said you didn't even really like clowns. So I asked, why are you dressed like clowns? But you wouldn't tell me. Tell me now. That's the game. Video conferencing flattens everything out. It makes everything dull. Clown makeup makes us pop. It makes us interesting. I suspected as much. So look at our faces now. Look at them. 
<laughs> All our makeup has faded away. We're no longer clowns playing games. <laughs> We're just people playing games. How pedestrian. How pathetic. And stuck in these boxes, there's no way to get more makeup. We, we can use our own blood for makeup. Too much, murder clown. A bunch of ordinary people playing a bunch of dull games on Zoom. You can't bear that tediousness. That's why you became clowns to begin with. Her words struck terror in the hearts of these ordinary people. But they still had one last argument up their freely yet wilting sleeves. But, but, I still think we should stay in the virtual world. I mean, isn't it? Isn't a dull world better than a, than a world filled with violence? An ecological disaster? And lurking racism that needs only one populist voice to rally behind? Ha! I was waiting for you to make that exact argument. Only you have the power to make the real world a better place. Do you know how? No. No? Ask me now. How? No. By releasing hope into the world. And that's me. I'm Hope. I thought her name was Annie. It's a metaphor. I'm a metaphor for hope. <laughs> Did the clown's fake barfing deter our hero? No, she pushed forward. I am Hope Personified. Release me into the world and I will make it a better place. Oh God, that's it. I'm ending this video chat just to get rid of this cliche little Miss Sunshine. Just so my ears stop bleeding from her optimistic, treacly nonsense. Ah. That's what you need to tell yourself, murder clown. <laughs> Dave! My name is Steve. I'm Jessica. And I'm Chip. And so the virtual clown fetish party came to an end. Annie McGee believed it ended because hope prevailed. But you and I know the truth. On Zoom, boredom comes for us all. And it finally came for Steve, Jessica, and yes, even for Chip. Even for Chip! <clears throat> End meeting. And with that, little hope is released into the world, folks. <laughs> Oh my goodness, uh, you guys, come on back here, everyone. Thank you so much, wow. What, uh, what a great way to kick off our opening night. Rebecca Quinn Roberts and Melissa Jennifer Gonzalez, Richard Lear, Carlos Guillermo, Dan Ticha, uh, the brilliant Jeff Tabneck, and in our center square, our director, Pamela Sabah. Thank you guys so much, what a, what a great show that was. Oh my that was God. amazing, guys. <laughs> I, I am so thrilled. Um, all right, listen, I, I, I promised I would try to just ask, ask the actors a, quick, a few quick questions and then get them out of here because they got to get ready for the next show, folks, at 8.30. We have a show at 8.30 on the other channel, Facebook. So if you want to see this again, please join us. We'll be live again. So they have got to reapply their... Um, the clown makeup. So I will ask. Uh, I will ask quick questions, and then I'll release you guys. Question number one. I know. Sorry, this is the cliche, but I must ask. What do you miss most about the real world? <laughs> what do you most? What, what do you most? What are you most looking forward to uh, once we start moving back into that world of normal normalcy? And uh, Richard, you get to ask that answer that question first. I can't wait to hug my friends. That's I really can't wait to hug my friends. Yep, aim into that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. The contact, it matters so much. It really does. Yeah. 
Um, how about you, Rebecca? What do you what do you what do you really miss most about this last year? I would. This is not a simple question, Nicholas. Um, <laughs> I I think I'll I'll focus on New York because I I really loved your words about how, the city and all of the details of your life in the city and how that's changed. I think I just miss you know walking down the sidewalk and like spilling into a coffee shop and meeting up with someone that you know and seeing someone that you didn't expect and then all of these magical little things happening to you throughout the day that it just feels like. Did I dream these things? Will this happen again? And I think that it will. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You know, one of the weird things is the fact that um, I know all of you. I haven't had a chance to see. Well, I, I know all of you. Uh, I haven't seen all of you in over a year. Um, but Rebecca, I have never I have never met you in person. So I am so looking forward to, like there, there are so many artists that we're working with here that we've never, that I've never met in person, that, that we've never had, a, we've, none of us have had a chance to meet in person. So my, my promise to all of the artists here is um, once we get back, we're going to have a big party, folks, and everyone, <laughs> uh, that's, we're going to do that. Um, Melissa, what do you think? Uh, what do I miss most? Um, well, I, I do agree with missing out on physical but what I miss most is um, just being around live theater um, movies. So those are the things that I've been missing out um, f during the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, the so in, in other words, the, the lack of live theater and the lack of you know, access into a movie theater. It leaves a big hole, doesn't it? It's, oh, it's, yeah. it's, oh yeah, I, I get it. I am with you. Dan, what about you? Oh, geez. I, I don't really know. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I have re actually really gotten used to the silence of the park up here. And mm. as the days go by noise, the noise level in the city is starting to increase every day and I'm mm. very I'm very sensitive to noise. So that's the that's the other side of it. But I just miss I do miss being around people and, and uh uh you know it's like I mean I that's all I got. No, I love it. And I agree with you. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, all right, one more quick question. Um uh, and this one maybe just another it, this might might be easier. Um, you guys all got to play clowns in this one. How do you feel about clowns? I mean, uh, just a quick poll. Uh, enjoy them or are scared, scared to death of them? Enjoy them. All right, Richard enjoys. And on that yeah. note, I have to go become a clown because I don't know. You head out. Thank you. We'll talk a little longer in the next, the next. Okay. So, okay. Thanks. Uh, Dan, how about you? Oh, I just, I, I always think of that clown painting that, it was a famous clown painting from the 60s or 70s. And yeah. it just absolutely made my blood run. You know? <laughs> the whole, what, the Emmett Kelly thing or the, the one with... There's a oh. clown. He's, I don't know, he's got a light blue thing on and he's got yeah. some balloons and he's looking down weirdly at some child or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know the artist of that. that, that it's, just, it's seared into my mind. But anyway, thank you. Sure, thank you. Okay. Uh, Melissa? Uh, well, um, it's very insightful because I, I never got to play a clown, but hey, as a person who loves, you know, doodling with makeup, any excuse to just dress up and be a clown, even though um, clowns make me a little uneasy. I don't have a phobia towards clowns. I mean, I think they're great from a certain distance, but I never thought I'd picture myself playing a clown, but then again, I love the fact that I get to dabble on the makeup. And I'm a makeup person and that's a big deal to me. So yeah, I enjoy it. You're great. You're wonderful. I mean, you're, you're they're all, I mean, the clowns, oh, you guys are just amazing. All of you. Thank all you. Of you all yes, of you. yes, I agree. Everyone's awesome. So, so party on party clown, go on and get ready for the next show. <laughs> Re Bye. Rebecca, what about you? Tell me how you feel about clowns. I'll say I love um, a painting of a sad clown. I think it's very touching. 
Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan when the clowns have um, long or sharp teeth. No, thank you. Okay. <laughs> oh, like, <laughs> no insane clown pop kind of thing for you. Okay. Yeah, but you're okay with like Emmett Kelly, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think they're very sympathetic. You know, I also I think of um, Charlie Chaplin, which I think Dan was really giving us some beautiful impressionistic Charlie <laughs> Chaplin vibes. You, you, you are absolutely right with that. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. It was, it's great because the smeared makeup sort of started as the Joker and it became, I love the, I love, yeah, the performances were really wonderful. And I want to talk to Pamela about the directing and everything, but I want to get ready and we'll see you uh, in a few minutes, about 20 minutes. We'll be back on, on Facebook. So you'll get to see everybody again, folks. Hopefully you'll tune in on that on, um, on for a second show. Oh my goodness! You got well, Carlos. I know Carlos disappeared. I wanted, I didn't know, I wanted to actually talk to you, Carlos. <laughs> Good. Hey, I deliberately didn't want to. I know you don't have to get makeup, but one of the what are you talking about? This takes like an hour. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> um, the reason why I wanted you here, and, and I and I just I'll start I'll start on this really quickly because um, one of the things I had sort of asked all of the writers to consider. Um, is the idea of trying to implement audio description into the aesthetic of the work that they're creating. Um, audio description is actually a tool which is used in, for example, live theater and on television um, and you know, and in certain films as well, where if you um, are, for example, blind, low vision, you can uh, put, have a headset and you'll, have, you'll actually hear someone describing any of the nonverbal action or, you know, uh, give brief descriptions of what the characters will look like. Um, it's a great tool, but I think that we can use it better if, if our artists are aware of it. And I love what, um, how, how Jeff thought of it and handled it tonight. Uh, so I will, we'll talk about that. But from your perspective, I mean, uh, what was that like for you to, to be able to sort of tell the story and help to fill in all those colors? Oh, I love the thought of that. Um, I, I'm all about inclusion. So being able to provide that extra bit of, of, of what, you know, members of our audience would, would need. I mean, that's, that's great. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting work. I know that when, you know, when, um, uh, when we were, with, when we worked, when we were theater by the blind, primarily, we, we were always trying to come up with sort of inventive ways to to incorporate that into the work so it doesn't become you know an, an outside tool and i i just think the more our our artists think of different ways to incorporate that it it just makes it makes makes them sort of more thoughtful it makes everyone more thoughtful in terms of how to approach that it makes i think it makes for better work too absolutely yeah um and i love the fact i love how i mean you're in in this case you, you weren't just a static voice. You were a character in this. You became the, you know, the driver of the bus in that regard. So it was just, it's, it's just incredible work and really, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, I, oh, thank you're, you. you're an amazing artist in, um, in all aspects, but, to, but just to get a chance to hear your, your voice and what you're doing without seeing you is really quite extraordinary. So thank, thank you. And thank you again for this opportunity. I really, oh. really enjoyed it. Well, there'll be more. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, take care. Thanks, Carlos. Thanks, Carlos. Um, so, so, all right, Jeff, um, I have to start with you because you, um, you, you, you never cease to amaze me. I mean, we have been working, I, I know that if you watch all of our uh, past intensives, you know that I've said that I love Jeff. He's like the angel on 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 my shoulder here, and has written so many really wonderful uh, plays for us. Um, but he has that little that, that he's got that wonderfully little warped side to him, where it's sort of <laughs> it's like this reality goes askew. I, it's I don't know. It's 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 kind of Twilight Zoney, but it's it, it's more like you know, the Tabnik zone. It's a different, <laughs> <laughs> um, what made you think of 
clowns. Like, what, <laughs> what, the, what the hell with the clowns? You, you know what, though? It's, it's your fault. You um, you put me, that first time we met for this intensive, you put me in the wrong breakout room. Talk you're online. And I was like, oh, this is so weird. I was like, it's like it was just weird to be in with people that I wasn't supposed to be with, and they weren't supposed to be with me. Um, so in any event, that's where it came from. Okay. Oh, I love, I, I again... It, here this, this, this. What, what I love about this play and why it opened our festival tonight, why it just, these. why I felt compelled to do it was, it, it was just that incredible combination. It was first of all funny. I was, I was hysterical. Thank, thankfully, I had my mic off. You wouldn't hear all the comments and everything. It was just hilarious. And then it, and then it becomes very real and poignant. And I have to tell you, we've talked about um, this idea of what happened. Like, what do we do? Like how, what's going to happen when we try to return to normal and yet we have to realize we cannot go back to where we were, especially after all that we've been through and all that we've learned and, you know, what will be the things that we return to? What will we miss? Will it just be a, an, an, you know, oh yeah, well glad that's over. Now let's move on. I don't know how, how that's going to, how we're going to react to that. And, and this play seriously introduces and asks those Question. Well, I think about, you know, that there are some things over this last year that I'm really grateful for and that we've really enjoyed, you know, especially as a family. And I do, I think very much about like, well, what's that transition going to be like when we all need to be places all the time? Yeah, it, it really is. It's a, such a fascinating um, thought. And, uh, you know, again, as we move closer towards going back into something that resembles normalcy, um, it, it's great to, to sort of have this work to, you know, th your work, I think, documents so much because you have written for every one of our virtual intensives uh, since we started them. Well, I think about this all the time, Nick, and I'm so grateful for it because I can mark this past year by all five plays, including the play for the Japanese people. That's five plays. Mm -hmm. And so I can picture where I was writing every play in this quarantine. And so thank you for that. It's, it's really been it's an extraordinary way to, to think about the past year. No, I, I thank you, because it really is. It marks, it's a metronome for us. And uh, when we do our next intensive in May, BPI 5, that will be called Time Capsule. And it really, it sort of serves to sort of, uh, to say that this last year, uh, we can really time capsule what we've been through based on the work that we're accomplishing. Well, I also want to just make sure that I say too, not to get off topic, but like Pamela did a great job with this piece and so did the <laughs> actors. I mean, they really found the different moments. So we were able to kind of be funny and be serious and be fast and be slow. And this sort of attention to detail was so excellent. Yeah. Well, when you're working with the best, come on. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say, yeah, um, on topic of what you were talking about, like this play is absurd um it's not realistic and yet it is absolutely captures a, a real truth yep. right it's, it's like you were just talking about like um I, I don't know if you said this already jeff because my husband came in he's on a work zoom <laughs> right now so he's looking for um computer stuff and uh, so i didn't hear what you said at the top but like i relate to all of the clowns, you know, the clown who's um, socially awkward and finally has found the balance <laughs> in the quarantine or the, the clown that's afraid of loss and, and wants the family close. Like, I don't know what's going to happen when, when my husband, you know, is not working from home. At first, it was like a turmoil to kind of adjust. And, and this year we've adjusted and we've adjusted and we've adjusted. And now how do we prepare to go back out? And then there's Murder Clown who has tapped into his dark side, which I can also relate to uh, the irritability in the. So anyway, and, and then Annie who um, who is trying to hang on to hope amidst all of those very real, very human, but very strong emotions that can really do a number on our hope and and she's got a battle for it and so like at the end hope is released into the world and that's kind of what I'm I feel uh is is a working on this play and I mean it's deep 
so there really were all of those moments to uncover. It was a journey. We they, they, the actors were so willing to play, yep. um, and so willing to be vulnerable, and and find those notes. And it's like every time I'd watch them, then I realized more and more of like the the meaning and, and depth of, of this play and I get a stomach cramp from watching it because it's so damn funny so <laughs> it's got it all it's it is, it is perfect it really is in that regard it just has it all and it just says so much you know Pamela I just wanted to ask one one question to you um mm -hmm. I, I you are you're you you're amazing you do everything you're an incredible actor mm -hmm. you're an incredible director you're an incredible writer you're an incredible musician you know, I, I, it's, I, don't want, you. I don't want to bore you with all the compliments, but you just, yeah, you do it all. Um, <laughs> this is the first time you have, I believe, directed on Zoom. And I know you were a bit nervous or reluctant to do this uh, early on. How was this experience for you? Um, yeah, absolutely. It's really amazing. You talk about a time capsule and like, in the beginning, as you know, I, I, I mean, I talked to you, Nick, and I was like, I'm not <laughs> ready to do anything Zoom related. Like I could not, I was so, uh, it's it's the opposite of the way I function, right? I'm a, ta I am low vision, uh, legally blind. I feel my way through the world. I, um, need things to hang on to and here's the screen <laughs> and if I'm looking if you see me then I can't really see you because I so so all of this and, and even just just uh, becoming uh, able to use zoom with 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 uh, my uh, um, technology with my screen reader it, it took me so first I acted in the first VPI and that was like, okay, I can sort of do that. That's sort of my my first thing is acting, right? So I, but I, it's it, so it's amazing that, like I said, this year it's been adjusting and adjusting and adjusting. So by the time I, when this one rolled around, I thought, I think I can, I think I think I want to try to do this because I'd been watching the other ones and. Um, I, I just got excited about like. Uh, I, yeah, I wanted to mm -hmm. oh. do it. I was scared though, but um, so and and uh, yeah, somehow it it the talent, the the commitment, um, the it's like the the willingness, the the um, love of theater, a love of storytelling from the people I was working with. I did feel it. Right, so it was tangible. It's a, such a, I'm in such a different place. I mean, I still want real theater. I still want to work together in a room. Well, of course. But um, I get things from this that you know, well, it, um, being able to be close and and be able to get, see moments with when my video is off. That um, if I'm in a theater and I'm far away, or it it. Or you know, even if I'm directing and I'm not right up, but this way I can like really zero in on them. And um, yeah, it was it was really a wonderful challenge, and I was scared, <laughs> but it was so worth it. Um, it, was, it was amazing, and yes, th you know, thank you, thank you for saying that. You know, because it was the the one thing that that we learned. Certainly, I learned when we started this. I, I know I've mentioned it before. I said it in in um, I think the last email I sent out that. You know, when we began the intensive, this was meant to be sort of a lifeboat for us. We would said, okay, this is going to just do something that we can keep busy and sustain us. And I said, it's it's never going to be, we're never going to be able to achieve the excitement and enthusiasm that we're able to do when we do the virtual intent or when we do the Playmakers Intensive Live because the, mm. people in the, room mm. and the energy is there. And I thought, what's well, never, never going to achieve that? And I was, I was wrong about that because the energy and the enthusiasm is here and it is coming right through the screen and in the and in the work uh, here, I, that's what that that's what that's what gets me about it. And our ability to work wherever we are is great. Um, I'm so grateful to the writers uh, uh, who want to be challenged and who agreed to say, you know what, let's write something for this platform. It saves us the issue of having to 
try to pretend we're on a stage when we're not. Um, so it make it, it's just very satisfying. And um, again, I, I love working with everybody. Uh, it, it's just it lifts me. So I think, and I hope it lifts all of uh, everyone who's watching because it's that it's exciting stuff. It's fun stuff. Yeah, it's amazing that we get to work with um, people from around the world. Um, that we get to gather together like this, you know. Yeah. Oh, definite yeah. Definite positives. There's definite positives. We will, as I said, once we go back to live theater, uh, which you cannot substitute, there is no business like show business. Um, <laughs> there's, there's nothing like live theater. But this work is also very unique unto itself. And it is, it presents a lot of wonderful gifts and benefits. So we're not going to stop doing this. So if you're sick of seeing us virtual, too bad, you're going to continue seeing us. Uh, uh, you, you will be locked into our boxes and you will have no choice but to continue watching us. Um, well, listen, you guys, um, I want to thank you so much for, for spending time and chatting and um, thank you for this incredible gift, to this, for this wonderful play. Um, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you, please. Yeah, thank thank you. you for making this happen. So I will just say in closing, everyone, thank you for joining us. If you liked the show, please tell your friends. We, we're just starting. We're just getting warmed up here. Tonight, a warm-up act? This isn't the warm. This is like a main event. Can, well, I've got nine more main events coming, folks. So please <laughs> tune in and watch. Um, if you like what you saw, tell your friends. Tell your family. Have everybody log on. I promise you, we will. you will not be disappointed. Um, uh, if you really want to know about what we're up to, go to our website, tvtv.org. You'll be able to see everything that uh, everything that we're about, what we do, and what we're planning. If you really love us? Click the little donate button at the top of the page. We would absolutely welcome and um, be very grateful for any love you want to show in that. So tomorrow evening, um, we have another incredible offering by another wonderful and slightly troubled uh, playwright, Chris Chan Roberson. The play. This meeting is being recorded. It will be directed by. Khalil Lasaldo, and it's another incredible stellar cast. Laura Gaona, Kalila Black, Shashi Benjera, and Estrella Tamas. So please tune, tune in and, uh, tomorrow night at 7.30 here. Um, also join us at 8.30 on Facebook. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful evening. Good night. I'm sorry. I didn't disturb you too much. No, you didn't. I, uh, I worked it into my talk back. <laughs>